Miami CRE Advisory Board. Uh, can we have a roll call, please? Mr. Aristide, Ms. Cobo, Ms. Cohen, Mr. Each. Here. Ms. Estime Irvin, Ms. Geimer. Present. Mr. McDermott. Present. Dr. Millian, Dr. Moyev. Here. Mr. Reynolds. Here. Mr. Robillard. Here. Mr. Sanchez. Present. We have quorum. Okay. All right. <coughs> Can we uh, start off with the Pledge of Allegiance? motion to approve the minutes of our February meeting. I so move. Second. Mr. Chairman, yes. uh, before you approve them, I, I, I noticed that it, it refers to a Mr. Clowder as opposed to a Mr. Crowder. Um, <laughs> if you could just, um, if they could fix that when okay. they do the final minutes and change it to Mr. Crowder. Okay. Which Please. page is that on? Mr. It's throughout the entire document. Okay. or comments on the minutes? I'm sorry, who made the motion? Ms. Geimer. Who seconded? I second. Okay. okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, agenda item 120, Northeast LLC, uh, second grant request. Yes. Um, as you recall, in January, Miss um, uh, Miriam Rojas had come to us for a request for a... Um, comprehensive rehab of the building that she acquired, which is the Sims building. Mm -hmm. And because she was trying to do so much so quickly, she didn't want to be delayed. She brought in the first part of her grant request to us and it was approved at the January meeting for her to be approved for 35,500 for new awnings and impact windows. She has n then sent us the, the rest of the bids for the painting and the fencing of the property which is, would come out to $15,472, uh, which is our 50% match. The total grant request in for both requests would take it, would be at 66,445, which is under the $80,000 um, grant guidelines. So staff is recommending approval, again, for the same reasons. It'll improve the aesthetics of West Dixie. She intends to bring in a restaurant it at the facility, she intends to rent it, and it's the building again. That's the building that's right next to the Bank of America on West Dixie Highway, the Sims building. Okay. Is anyone here Down from? Uh, side of West Dixie. Is anyone here representing Metro Heights? Yes, she's right here. Oh, would you like to come up and say a few words? With the record to reflect that, um, Mary. Yeah, Estime. 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 Okay. Will be a thing. Um, we're just looking to do um, retail, hopefully bring in a cafe, a restaurant, um, and then there's plenty of office space as well on the second floor. So, and just upscale it and, uh, you know, which is part of the windows and all that. I think it's going to really give a nice aesthetic look and then the fencing, because we do have the parking lot in the back, um, we just want it for safety concerns and um, also to keep people, you know, on the sidewalk because there's a lot of cross street traffic. Um, that piece of property is kind of a pie shape um, in the back there as well. So um, we would like to um, confine the boundaries of the parking lot with a fence as well. So, um, and we do plan to do a full on, um, you know, painting, repainting of the whole building as well. All right. <coughs> Certainly West Dixie needs all the help it can get. Mm -hmm. um, does anybody have any questions of Ms. Cohen? Uh, I have one question. It's just a, just a regular question. That parking lot in the back, is all of it yours or some of it belongs to the buildings next door. No, all of it is ours. It's and a weird angu angu angular <laughs> yes. thing. It is a lot. triangle shape, and um, we are actually also looking to, and I know it takes a while, but to get an abandonment of right-of-way um, for the alleyway as well, so we can kind of 
cut it off a little bit. Is the island red still functional? As, I mean, is it still over used? Is it used? Yeah. It's used by cars randomly sometimes to get from the Bank of America, sneak around and as avoid shortcut. lights as a shortcut. Yeah. And some of the, you know, people, uh, a lot of kids cross through when school's out too. And um, But what ends up happening is that there is so much garbage constantly um, in that just from partially wind blowing, partially people coming through and just dropping garbage around. So. That, that was a hobby stop there? It was there. It's still still there? Yes. Yeah. It's kind of a mandarin or yellow orange yeah. color right now. Yeah. Have you spoken to staff about abandoning that? Briefly, yes, um, how I need to approach public works. And also mm -hmm. there's two other neighbors that would be affected by any kind of abandonment there, um, one of which is on the corner. I believe it's owned by Pumo. Mm -hmm. So, And then um, a laundromat um, that I think is actually he's looking to s sell as well. Does so. anyone have any additional questions? Okay. Yeah. Do I hear a motion to? So move. Second. All in favor? Thank you, you very much. Thank I, you very I'm much. I'm really happy with what Ron's been doing. Thank really. You. Yeah, as I say, anything that, that helps with success. Yes, yes. <coughs> okay. Okay, the second item is Comprehensive Health Center Rehabilitation. Um, I'm sorry, Comprehensive Health Center, um, which is located, I apologize right here. Okay, I'm, I'm there now. I missed my pages. 671 Northwest 119th Street, um, Dr. Moyes, um, and you are the applicant who will be answering any questions for this grant because this is your project. So I just want to let everyone know that Dr. Moyes is making that request. Dr. Moyes intends to expand the clinic that he has at that location, um, pretty much double the size, and he intends to hire more staff, offer more medical services. But for now, he has a sign in front of the facility, it's 20 years old, and he needs to, he would like to change it for now as part of his grant request. He intends to bring back to us uh, a full application with plans and design for his full rehab um, to request for additional funds. So he's requesting right now, the when we look at the signs and we have the bids and everything, Hit the, we would be giving him a $12,942 grant as a 50% match for the sign. Um, again, I've attached the pictures. I apologize. The pictures that were online were black and white, a little bit fuzzy, so that's why we did them in color so you can see the existing sign that's in the front. Again, like I said, it's about 20 years old. It's a simple um, sign, and he would like to change that and upgrade it to a digital sign to make it not only modern, but to also match the expansion he intends to make with the whole property in the future. Dr. Moise is here to answer any questions you might have. Okay. Uh, I, do, not, no, I do have some questions myself. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the, the, and I used to go there. Um, the, 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 uh, well, let me, that's what happened. Now we're yeah, we have something on this council, and I'm sure that the answer will be there. He is the commissioner of this center, which is Right, I presume you're declaring a conflict of interest because you're on the board right, right, but I cannot, right. have it. cannot yeah. vote on it and cannot participate like in the discussion that they have about it. Of course, you can participate as the applicant presenting, um, and, presenting asking questions. and asking questions of staff. Mm -hmm. Okay. Would you like to maybe to make it easier sure. for everybody to <laughs> detach from the role of the yeah. board member and the applicant, yeah. make it easier? Yeah, Doc. Doc if Lucy, you could do you on the podium. The over here? I know some of the members had some questions. And again, introduce yourself as the applicant, please. I'm Dr. Henri de Moise. I'm the applicant for Comprehensive Health Center, uh, location 671 Northwest 119th Street. Uh, it's a full service medical center. Uh, as Rasha just mentioned, we having a uh, we are in the process of expanding the facility. There's a big warehouse in the back that we're in the process of, of rebuilding. And then we're going to use the present facility as a multi-specialty center and use the new building as a primary health care center. 
Uh, the um, architect is currently uh, designing the plan for the new building. It's taking like two months. Uh, it took a long time to get the uh, demolition permit done <coughs> and to get the process done. That's been completed. So meanwhile, since it's going to take a while, we wanted to at least get the front of the building um, uh, um, ready. Uh, 7-Eleven, uh, as you probably heard, is coming right there in the corner. Mm -hmm. And our sign has been there for 20 years. So we need to upgrade that. Uh, I like the digital uh, side because we can send messages, happy holidays, the temperature and, and the date and the cancer and so on. So that's, 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 the, uh, that's the reason why we're doing this. Okay, any questions? Um, uh, what is, do you know, what is the height of the sign that we're gonna Yes, it's on there. Uh, it's, it's gonna be the same, the same, same the height, same same height. height. just change, yeah, just change the, the, the So it's height. approximately the same size as what's there? Um, I, I believe I believe so. Let me see what it says on this. Um, the size, everything is everything is on the is on the sheet there. The size, the measure, everything else. Mm -hmm. I would have loved for it to be higher mm -hmm. because we have some some uh, some trees that are looking black in the size. But apparently zoning, we have to to go to the process and see. Okay, well whatever. It's within it's twenty the feet. It's eight feet yeah. wide. Digital sign one is very expensive, and two. But what would you put? Would you put like gifts, special? You know, on we we gonna we gonna run <laughs> the dif the different services, um, and we have the temperature there. We have the uh, the, the date ev the date every day, and we're also gonna if there's a holiday, say Happy Thanksgiving to everybody. You know, send messages or help messages. You know, every week we'll have a new message for the. Uh, they're pro totally programmable. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. For me, it's how you can program. You can put whatever message that you want on this. Um, uh, it's a comment about your architect and about getting the demolition permit. I, I have to do it regularly for me, and it takes a long time. It's 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 a grueling. Thing. It is. So. Because they want to make sure that whatever that you actually demolition inside, they go to the proper place. Mm -hmm. And actually, it's not the city. The county is actually the, the one that's taking the. Uh, Which one? Who? The county. The, the, I mean the county. Oh, that's a Fire and, yeah. and Durham, yeah. right? Yeah. 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 But the so city was well. very, very smooth, you know. It's, uh, you know, we had no problems with the city. Okay. Yeah. Well, you know, this is, this will be, in looking at the old sign, I'm sure that the new sign will upgrade considerably um, <coughs> that area. And not to mention the fact that, as you mentioned, you know, that 7-Eleven that's coming in there, it's going to be an upgrade of 7-Eleven. It's not just going to be a... Exactly. It's going to be one of their, as we, because we had the uh, people from Seven come before our planning commission, and it's going to be quite a, uh, as they said, it's going to be the top tier of, of the store. So this goes, fits very, very well in with that whole revitalization and making that corner really look nice. Yes, it is. So I th think it's a very good thing. What, is that 7 Eleven on the corner? Yes. Yes, where Jimmy, where Jimmy where used to be. Where Jimmy's restaurant used to be? Where who is? Jimmy's. Jimmy's, oh, really? and the then there's a car wash right next yeah. to it. Yeah. They're buying the whole property. Yeah, that's no, that's always coming down. Jimmy's is not there anymore. No, they would, well, yeah, they're there now, but they're going to be moving up. Wow. Or just close down, wherever they're going to go. They already closed. Yeah. Yeah. They closed? Did they? Yeah. yeah. Jimmy's closed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Okay, does anyone right. have any other questions? Any place where you want to go. <laughs> <laughs> any, any, any other questions? I just have, I, I just, I just have a, a, a question uh, yeah. for, for you. As as the as the applicant, uh, usually when you have a quote, again that's for f you know for future references. Mm -hmm. When you have a quote, they usually choose the one that's the lowest. Is that right. is yeah, that what it is? That's what they go by. And okay, okay, and it's fifty percent of the lowest one. Yeah. Right. Okay, thank you. That's what you I know, know. Uh, a fast war story on Jimmy's. When I started in the police department in nineteen seventy, it used to be called Lavish's. Yes. And we had a city jail there, and that's where we used to get the food for the prisoners that were in our city jail. <laughs> <laughs> All right, is there any other, yes. being that there's no other questions, do we have a motion to approve the second? Do we have a second? A second. Okay, any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Yes. Okay, that's released. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, at this point, please um, uh, make note in the record that uh, Mary Simon Irvin has arrived as well as Blanca Cobo. Yes. Yeah, no, just for the... Okay. 
Um, moving on to agenda item number three. Yes. Okay. Well, um, as part of the whole CRA reorganization and um, getting our, you know, our homework was to get the plan approved, and the manager will be able to give an update um, in his report uh, about where we are in that. What was approved at this this year's budget was to work on branding and marketing to do business attractions. Um, changing, repositioning downtown North Miami, repositioning the CRA so that not only are we attracting new businesses, but we're attracting new development, new um, customers, and creating that downtown feel that we've been lacking for a while. Um, so um, now that we've, like I said, we've passed that first phase, um, Sharon McCormick, the marketing director from RMA, is here to do the presentation on the process that we will be going through and show you all the wonderful things that they've done already in the West Palm Beach CRA, Dania Beach CRA, and all these other downtown areas so we can have an idea and also maybe give her a little bit of feedback so that she can hear from you, the stakeholders, you know, what else should she be focusing on. And then after that, I think the process is after the presentation, we'll start doing our, our work. We will come back to you with a formal plan for you to approve for us to actually execute. Okay? Okay. So I this is just basically a report, basically. It's a presentation of what it is that we will be endeavoring in the next year or two. And she's using, using the screen. Right? Yes, she's using, using the screen. screen. So mm -hmm. if you want to turn around and go into the, the section. The box. Thank you. Okay, as Rasha said, my name is Sharon McCormick. I'm the Director of Business Attraction and Marketing for RMA, and um, I work very closely with Kevin Crowder on a lot of the different cities and projects that we work in. So I'm delighted to be here um, tonight, and I am going to just give you an overview uh, very quickly. I talk rather fast, so you can ask questions um, while I'm going through or at the end, whatever your preference is. Um, but I'm just going to give you an overview of basically what we're going to get started on in the next couple of months, uh, putting together a real strategic marketing plan. And uh, let's see. Yes. So one of the questions that I will be asking, and, and one of the things that we will be doing through this process is hosting some um, stakeholder input meetings. So while, while tonight is not set up as, you know, when I'm going through the process of asking very, very specific questions, um, during one of those types of meetings, but we, we can discuss some of these things. But this is basically, you know, what is your message? What is the message of North Miami, downtown in particular? And basically we, we look at, you know, how do you want your visitors, residents, potential investors, and customers to think and feel about you? Um, one of the things that I always find is everyone, everyone has, every city has a brand. It just may not be the one that you want because people think something. Um, so a brand, my, def my favorite definition in place branding and in city branding and uh, destination branding is that it's a singular idea or concept that you own inside of the mind of, of a prospect. Um, so it doesn't matter if it's a business, it's business or businesses are going to think a certain thing about North Miami, residents will think something, and uh, consumers will think something. So we want to help guide that process and really have a clear message. So the process. Um, it is very uh, strategic. Uh, we start with a situation analysis. Where are we? What does the data say? Um, we use Esri reports. We're going to be conducting several surveys. I'll talk a little bit more about that at the, at the very end as well. Consumer surveys and business surveys. Um, we'll do you know, your typical SWOT analysis, but basically I like to call it problems and opportunities. Really, through the situation analysis, we're going to identify what are the problems, what are standing in the way, how do we turn those problems into opportunities, and then very, very specifically create objectives together. Um, and we want objectives that are clearly defined. Like it's easy to say, oh, we need more businesses. What types of businesses, 
how many do we need, and in what, what spaces. We need to do an inventory, um, and we were, we were discussing that process that we're going through to really inventory the spaces that are available because the type of business that you're gonna want is based on do they need 1,000 square feet, do they need 500, do they need 5,000. When we know that, that um, information, then that's what gives us the tools and we uh, ha have clear objectives on what types of businesses we wanna go after. And then we all, uh, you know, everyone in this room and everyone that we you know, engage with, you become brand ambassadors and business attraction ambassadors. Um, you know, my, my experience has shown that uh, the vast majority of new businesses come into a district because of the existing businesses that are there. Um, so it's, it's kind of interesting. We'll develop strategies, very detailed tactics, and a budget to go along with that. And then we'll, of course, evaluate along the way and, and shift gears if we need to as we go. Um, that summary, a summary of that is, you know, my philosophy and my process is we collect data, information, um, and we connect people, places, and things that have never been connected before. We collaborate with groups, organizations, stakeholders. We communicate and we create. So we wanna be able to communicate this message that we create and then go back to collecting data again and see how, our, how we're doing. So the value of developing the identifiable brand, we always say bringing in the dollars, whoops, I really mean people. You know, because we're not all about money. We do want to we, we want to create places. So I'm going to go through um, the process of defining who you are, who you can be, leveraging your resources and the resources of others, and then identifying and developing new markets. I put this. Um, this is the only example or picture I have up here of the downtown Oakland Park Culinary Arts District. Um, that was a district that we worked in, and on the on the surface you know, you would drive through and there were just empty storefronts. The city had spent $30 million, and Kevin may have told you this story before, um, but it, the city had spent $30 million in their downtown doing infrastructure and streetscape, and um, they had beautiful trees and benches and fountains, and it was really pretty, really pretty in the streetscape, but literally the vacancies were, I mean, all the buildings were vacant. Um, on the one end of the bit of the district, there was a 180,000 square foot old Sears warehouse building. Um, very unusual for a downtown district to have um, a building that large, and it was scheduled for demolition. The market crashed; it didn't go anywhere, so it was there. So when I did all the research and that that part that um, I was talking about, understanding the situation, it it became really, really evident that there were a cluster of existing culinary related businesses in Oakland Park. There were probably 20 or 30 cabinet makers. If you wanna redo your kitchen and you wanna get you know, five or 10 really good you know, proposals on what you wanna do in your kitchen, you go to Oakland Park, kinda like where you go to cars and you shop for the cars. That's what was is existing in the city, not in the downtown area, but in the city. Um, there was a, a specialty knife maker. There was a restaurant supply company. It just leapt off the page that everything, there was such a cluster of things in Oakland Park that were all about the kitchen. So we launched the brand, um, you know, vetted it through the process and went through the advisory board and the, and the CRA board. And um, we launched the Culinary Arts District, the Tasteful Destination. Um, since that, two weeks into launching that concept, um, the Funky Buddha Brewery was uh, surfing the web looking for a place where they wanted to open a 20,000 square foot microbrewery. They saw our presentation, they called us. That was a phenomenal business attraction strategy just to, to identify who they were and who they could be in that downtown district. Um, they subsequently opened up a 20,000 square foot brewery in that uh, 880,000 square foot anchor on the end of the uh, downtown area and they've now expanded to over 40,000 square feet. Six of the properties changed hands and all six properties in the downtown are becoming culinary related uses. And one of the, there's a, a restaurant from Miami that ha actually moved up and opened. So it was just an exciting, it's an, an, an exciting to watch um, these things happen. Um, oops, I clicked too far, sorry about that. Okay. Um, the Project for Public Spaces, uh, they say when people think about great cities, it's often the intangible qualities, the vitality, the sense of place, and the positive experiences that they remember the most. This is a picture of the principal of our firm. His name is Chris Brown, and we were in Barcelona last year um, for a Project for Public Spaces conference on um, downtowns and public markets. So I just wanted to show that picture because it was an amazing experience, and it's so true. Um, the one on the right is the Miami Design District because when you 
go, you know, turn around every corner. There are shadows and beautiful things to see. So there's a discovery process to it, and you definitely get a feeling. You get a sense of place when you're there. Um, and the bottom right is the Wynwood Arts District, and, you know, they want people to have a really memorable experience and really feel comfortable there, and that, that cute cafe kind of shows that. The next thing is um, what I really focus on all the time is that the Knight, Knight Foundation did a study of about 35 cities across the country, and they found that the top three things that connect people to place, why would a business want to be here, why would anybody want to live here, um, the top three things is not, you know, how many jobs are there or what's the cost of living. It's truly about the aesthetics, the social offerings, and how open and welcoming a place is. So, you know, how does, how does our downtown look? How does it look from the outside? Um, what are the things that engage people? What is there to do? And, and how inviting is it? How inviting are the people? Um, these are examples of downtown P of Pompano Beach on the waterfront. And then uh, Rasha and I were talking about Have a Sip which is Summer in Paradise that West Palm Beach did this past summer. So uh, it was a, a three-month-long series of events that no matter who you were from, you know, in, in the city or out of the city. Um, so positioning yourself in the marketplace, you know, being strategic, focusing on the local authentic assets of an area, the unique experiences, the shopping, the dining, and the cultural amenities. These are all from your downtown. And then looking at the inspiration and the consistency, how do we apply what's already here in the physical space, what's authentic to North Miami, and then turn it into um, touch points and messaging. This example is of Dania Beach. Um, that's the physical environment on the left. That's their, their plaza where you drive into the parking garage and their city hall and their library. So we took the inspiration of what was in their, in their physical environment and combine that with um, the Nautilus shell and, and an image of the Nautilus shell. And then every touch point, whether it's a, a newsletter or banners or uh, the arts and seafood celebration event, anything that we created after um, we launched the concept of what was authentically Dania Beach, uh, it all looks the same. Um, then the, you know, discovering and really using the local aspects of a community, engaging with people, and capitalizing on the assets that, that make people feel like they belong. Just, you know, anytime you have an opportunity to engage. We uh, created in Northwood Village and have used it in every city I've worked in since uh, an event called the Neighborhood Ambassadors Program, or a program called Neighborhood Ambassadors, where we really engage with the local community to become the ambassadors. Um, again, for business attraction, for improving quality of life and understanding. So that has been a really successful program. Um, and then our, our bottom line is we want, we want to position places where businesses can thrive. You know, where is it, how, how, can, how can these businesses be in business, stay in business, and attract more? Um, some of the things that, some of the uh, opportunities to leverage resources, we're in, in the, the second category, is when you have vacancies, um, you know, it's kind of commonplace now, you know, doing pop-up shops and galleries, but coming up with really creative ideas on how those, how those types of programs will work. We're going to be looking at those opportunities here and, um, you know, you using merchants to uh, use, have, do demonstrations at special events. Again, cross-promoting and figuring out ways to, uh, to leverage your resources, your existing resources. Cultural facilities, obviously, in the city of Pompano Beach, we have the Ally Cultural Arts Center, which is brand new and the Bailey Contemporary Arts. This is just, um, you know, we have these two resources in our downtown. That's about all that's there right now, and we're going to be capitalizing on the existing assets in order to create a new downtown in Pompano Beach. Um, this is our social media reach uh, at, at Baca. In 18 months, uh, we've reached over 645,000 um, impressions, and uh, in just the three months at Ally Cultural Arts, over 77,000 people. So we're really you know, changing that image of what that area is about. Also leveraging press. Today's example is exactly, it's so, uh, you know, perfect for, for my presentation tonight, is it's not about always um, leveraging the press that the CRA would get or the city would get as in a whole, but what are, what is the press saying about all of your businesses? And there's this great New Times article. How do we bring those together and then we get that, you know, um, uh, out to other people and use that press to really showcase what North Miami is all about. 
and then any of the opportunities that uh, we have that are existing events where there are opportunities to cross promote. This is just an example of Clamata Street in downtown West Palm Beach has a weekly um, event called Clematis by Night. About 3,000 people come. Two miles away, there's this little area called Northwood Village that 10 years ago was, you know, completely dilapidated. So we wanted to capitalize on the people coming to this 3,000, you know, coming to this event and um, incentivize them with a free cupcake from our cupcake shop in Northwood Village and get people to register to win, give us their email addresses and know that weekly they would get information about what was going on, not only in downtown, but in the Northwood Village area as well. So just really understanding how we can um, use those opportunities. Developing cross-promotional campaigns and partnerships. Um, we had a, a, a book drive or a bookmark drive where you had to go into a shop in order, you had to, at, at every restaurant you got the register to win form, you had to register to win actually in a store. So our restaurants drive retail, we know that that's um, a, a, a known fact that restaurants drive retail. If some of your restaurants are doing really well and your retail shops aren't, how can we utilize the, the people who are going into these restaurants and incentivize them to then go into the resale shops. So that was a, a really cool shopping spree that we were able to do and um, leverage the, the people in the restaurants. Um, then number three is identifying and developing new markets. And uh, you've probably seen some of the reports that uh, Kevin has put together for the CRA plan. Uh, so a lot of this research is done. I'm using it to go on to the next level for this marketing plan and uh, really understanding the audience that exists here and the audience that we can attract here. So those are two, uh, two audiences to focus on. Um, and then this is just a really cool demonstration of this tapestry segmentation and understanding uh, what, uh, what, what's missing here and what we can bring here that will work. I, I threw this in because a couple of weeks ago, I literally had the privilege of going to the Convening Cultural 2016 conference that was um, put on by the Division of Cultural Affairs from the state of Florida, and it happened to be in Broward County this year. Uh, it was the first time I had gone. It's their third annual one. Uh, I can't read what's on the screen, but there was a, an amazing futurist that was there, and she talked about this shift, um, radical shift, she said, by 2050, the radical shift from multiculturalism to polyculturalism. And the most important things that people are looking at today, the top, the top things that, um, that are, are driving consumers today are authenticity, mindfulness, celebration of life, enjoyment, uniqueness, family closeness, optimism, diversity, work-life balance, and discovery. When you combine those things with tradition and aspiration, that's what motivates customers today. Um, to, to be, you know, to shop in your downtowns and, and be a part of your downtowns. So it was a, it was a really interesting new uh, concept that is going to gain more and more. You'll hear that term, I believe. Our particular approach is, um, you know, we, we go through this process of inspiration and preparation. We see what's here. We develop the concepts then you know, illuminate them, um, kind of vet them through an internal process, then verify them and launch. So we'll be doing all of that with, with Rasha and with you as we go along. Um, just a couple of examples I wanted to give you, identifying and developing new markets. Uh, in Northwood Village in, in uh, West Palm Beach, we actually won, uh, really cool, an international award for repositioning that area. Um, it was called the Real Faces, Real Places campaign. And uh, we, we were able in a, over, a, over the course of a 10 year period, in the first five years, uh, we attracted 44 new businesses to come to this nine block district. Um, 10 years later now, there have been over 130 businesses that have uh, located in this district. Some of those businesses were there when we started and they're still there today and have just you know, been able to thrive again. Northwood Village is a, is a really cool, funky, interesting place that's two miles north of downtown West Palm Beach, so it's off the beaten path. Um, so you want to develop these messages that really match your brand and your promise. The main thing about Northwood Village when we got there 10 years ago was that the people that were inside these dilapidated buildings were amazing, and they were running amazing businesses. So we, we ran with that, that program for about five years. Um, these are just some of the collateral pieces that we did. We always focus on the earned, owned, and paid media. 
um, your earned media is your press, uh, your owned media, your, your uh, websites and your social media page pages, and then paid is obviously advertising that you might have to do. The uh, piece on the right is the inside of uh, MAP, which uh, Rasha and I have talked a lot about, will be very, very interesting to do down here, create a downtown walker's guide that can also be used as a business attraction tool. These are just examples of some social media reach in Pompano and Dania. And then in closing, this is my favorite thing. Logic gets you from A to B, and imagination takes you everywhere. So with that, I will close with um, now it's time to get to know me. Arthur Sori, <laughs> he had the idea, and he's like, let's think about it, and then, you know, Sharon and I, we walked around all of downtown, and we visited some businesses, and then she came back with that, so, um, I think we're going to have to trademark it, <laughs> Mr. Manager, we're going to have to trademark it, right, so, any comments or feedback, like I said, this is just a presentation of what the process that we're going to be going through. And um, we will be, you know, doing a lot of, and there is a homework part for the, yeah, the, the advisory. There, there is homework for the advisory board. Um, the surveys that um, I think she mentioned. Mm -hmm. So we do have surveys for the businesses and we have surveys for the consumers. Um, we're going to be emailing them. The homework for the board is we would like you to forward it to five of your friends. Five okay? Words, At least five. At least five. What is Each Polyculturalism. Poly Good poly question. Poly the the um, the main thing that uh, the main premise is that as um, different cultures uh, it sort of infuse, like you know, what is your heritage? I'm Scotch, Irish, English, German, and you know, as as time goes on, we're becoming more polycultural, where the cultures are crossed, you know, and and no one and no one's not really identifying with any one specific culture and we I, I really think what's going to happen is that as as you see this and you can kind of see it with ancestry.com you know I, I've been thinking about since we went to this presentation I have Jasmine Etienne with me also she's on our marketing team um, and came in we were at this conference and um, I, I think that people are going to be really interested in their different heritages that they're made up of you know they're going to want to know about all of them and um, so it's 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 like removing the boundaries. So what is polyculturalism? Poly, it, it came. That's that's what's happening is the fusion. Um, fusion. Poly oh, came poly. from uh, an agricultural term. Um, the uh, where uh, like a seed, the two the seeds are crossed and then it becomes something else. Um, so that was the concept that she was presenting, and it was about eight years ago that a a, um, a man wrote an article or a blog called Polycultural Me, and that was the first time it had been used. And now eight years later, you know, the Division of Cultural Affairs, and she's a, a futurist that's hired by major international firms. She came from Chicago to be the keynote speaker. And, you know, pe companies like Toyota and everybody pay this company to know where do we need to do with our advertising and our marketing strategies and efforts as we go into the future. So it was just interesting to, uh, to hear her speak. Sharon, thank you so very much. We appreciate it and look forward to thank you. future presentations. Yeah, Any it's exciting. Okay. Was there any homework? Yeah. I'll be emailing everybody okay. with the homework. Okay. And we look forward please, to homework. I hope, <coughs> I hope you can help us. The, the more information, obviously, will give us a better idea of what we need to do and what we need to be focusing well, on. Five years, maybe seven or eight years ago, we did have a walking guide in the future. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we, uh, I remember that.
Okay, we have um, city attorney's report. Do you have anything? Uh, no, just a no, okay. okay. Um, Mr. Executive Director, do we have anything? Well, as everybody's aware, we did get our plan passed um, at the last council meeting, um, or the last CRA board meeting. We did get the plan passed. Um, now we'll start negotiating with the county. The county's aware that we passed the plan, and we'll start the negotiation with them. Um, tomorrow we go for our budget to be approved in front of the board tomorrow morning in front of the county board. Um, so things are moving. Um, we have 11 people here tonight. We got one person missing? Yeah. This thing is really uh, growing. Um, we did have an article in the New Times <coughs> about the Cafe Creme um, coming mm -hmm. on board over here in North Miami. So the buzz is getting out, and uh, I think we're picking up a head of steam now. And uh, as we continue to do these projects, it's only going to get better. Um, this marketing that um, RMA is going to be doing is, is going to be critical for us. Everybody's you know, um, talking about our CRA now without the marketing. Once we start this marketing uh, uh, initiative, then I think it's really going to start picking up um, and when we start meeting with the county. Um, so um, just thank you guys for your dedication. You know, everybody's showing up. Um, it speaks volumes because, you know, the county looks to see the check <coughs> when people show up. So I think we can show a, a very good record from where we started when um, Rasha, myself, Terry, and when we came on board uh, from no to now we're almost at 100%, you know, everybody's showing up. So that speaks volumes to the county that, you know, that we're behind this and we're picking up momentum as we move forward. So I thank you guys for that. Um, and that's it. Uh, we'll start our negotiations with the county. We'll keep you guys posted on what's going on. Dr. Moniz? Uh, I, I did not um, the uh, city council meeting last week. I don't know if you, you might uh, you approved the plan, but it's not what Jeff recommended. They didn't stick with it. It's not a stick with it. They didn't come. Back. They did the, the same. It's the exact status quo of what we have right now, which is a ninety-five percent plan. Um, it, it no matter what we turned into the county, it's going to be negotiations. So we approved that. We can get to the county. They can say, hey, that's the perfect plan. And approve it. I I don't know if that's going to happen. Um, if not, then they'll negotiate with us, and we'll work from there and, and work out a plan that works. But it's three parties have to agree: um, the CRA board, the city, and the county. So we can't just say what we want. The county has to agree to it as well. So we'll start negotiating it and, and, and see what the final numbers are. They, they will take it. They'll, they'll take everything because it takes money away from them also. Well, That's going to be the big thing. And, and I think one of the things that the county staff had said is we want you to present a plan that's not only achievable, but give us a number so that anything over that amount will go back to the taxpayer. So they'll be paying attention to the projects, what we're doing, how we're doing, and the numbers to make sure that whatever, you know, overage we have will go back to the taxing authorities, meaning the city and the county. And, and um, it's a big deal to pass the plan. I mean, we got the plan passed on the first reading. That's a big deal in itself just to get the plan passed. Now, the, the financing, you know, that's the, 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 the small part of it. We got the plan passed. It was a very good plan that was put together with a lot of hard work. Um, so the, the, this is the particulars now. The plan's passed. The county knows the plan's passed. Uh, with the dollar amount, what it takes us to move the CRA forward. So we'll negotiate the numbers and get to that. Um, it, it's almost, it's not likely that the county will approve everything status quo because the plan only accounts for a certain amount of money and they're not going to let us Keep have that free will with all the extra money. Um, so, uh, but it's a good plan. But really get it passed on the first, you know, reading and the meeting went very well, you know, so that's, that's a big deal for North Miami CRA. That's a real big deal. Yes. The basics is, is I'm sorry, you, you were like, I'm, you're following your question. Yeah, you could do that, yeah. 
this it doesn't fit. Okay. The nego well, let me say this, the negotiations probably won't be open to the public. The negotiations will be with but the staff that will be down negotiating with the county and, and determining what they're willing to do and we'll bring it back to you guys. But ultimately the board will have to approve the plan. So you guys will know before anything gets approved where it's going. And that'll, it'll be the meetings that we have here. Once it goes, it goes before the official county board. That'll just be to vote on it. So you guys will know about it then and can attend if you like. Okay. Right, is there anything that's open to the public? Put it out there regardless. Okay. Um, is is uh, you're going to the to uh, uh, the county commission tomorrow? Council county com commission tomorrow. Yes. For what? the which for this year's budget? Yes, for the 15-16 budget. That's for the gen the gen the, the entire council, like for the for their approval. Yes. Okay. Not a committee meeting. We passed the committee meeting committee. two weeks ago. Okay. We passed the committee meeting without a problem at all. Okay. It was voted 6-0 for approval. Okay. So it, it, it bodes very well. Yes, uh, they made reference to us um, having um, put a plan in place with um, administering the, the CRA with administration, how we're doing it with a lot less money than other people are doing it because we've cut down on the, the administrative expenses and brought everything in-house and how lean the budget was. So I think we won't have a problem. Right now, as it stands, we're on the consent agenda right now, and they haven't pulled it as of 7.30. So it should be fine. Those are the consent agenda. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The consent agenda for the county? For the yeah. county. Oh, okay. So in the past, every the time that we would get a call at two o'clock in the afternoon, hey, your item just pulled off the agenda. So this is the first time in many years that we haven't gotten that call. And we've called them to check it. They're like, no, it's still on consent. So Rosh and I will still go down tomorrow, but we don't think it'll be pulled off the agenda. Yeah. Yeah, we should be fine. Excellent. Doing great work. Okay, well, listen, we thank you very much to staff who've gotten us to this point. We really appreciate that. Um, Kenny, you had a point? Yeah, I just want to remind everybody, um, him and Miami Harold this Sunday in a major session. So I was notified on Friday that we're looking at the annexation on Biscayne Boulevard from March the 15th, and we're in a head-to-head -head fight with Biscayne Park, even though we put into that annexation a year ahead of time. And um, they get right now all our city services, our water and our sewer system. And uh, where, where is the city with this? Are we, do you know? It'll be definitely a, uh, policy decisions for wh where I think we're planning on, we do have attorneys, outside attorneys that are looking into it and the council is saying, hey, they want to move forward, you know, with us trying to secure the, 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 the annexation. But it'll be up to the county, I mean, not to the county, but up to our our board to say, yes, continue to fight for it. Yeah, we'll we'll bring this up tomorrow at the, at the uh, city council meeting, but I think it behooves us all to be aware of that. that uh, it's absolutely preposterous that Biscayne Park to respond to that, to service that area, has either drive through North Miami or through the county to get there. And we have a major accident on Biscayne Boulevard. I want you all to think about this for a second. We have a major accident on Biscayne Boulevard just south of 121st Street, okay, on a southbound lane. That doesn't affect the residents of Biscayne Park. They're on the other side of the railroad tracks, and they're all a residential area. That affects us, <coughs> the citizens here, our business, our commerce. We're the ones that are going to get tied up in that traffic jam, not the citizens of Biscayne Park. They have been traditionally, and they are, ever since their inception, a residential neighborhood. That's what their police department is. We are a full-service police department from traffic homicide to SWAT to everything else. Those buildings right now are across the street from us and south of us. And the natural, the natural marriage would be to come into the city of North Miami. And we should not roll over on this, we should fight for this. This is our, that could be an increase in our tax base, substantially lower than what Biscayne Park is getting. And I, I, I do my walk in the morning, I, I do like six miles in the morning, I come through there, and I just cringe when I hear that the park wants to take that, especially since we put in a year ahead of time. 
again, let's go back to our taxes, let's go back to our services, and let's go back to common sense. If that goes to Biscayne Park, we're the ones that are going to be in trouble over here. Yeah, I think that that's aiming for more growth, though, isn't it? The word is it's got to be more technical now that the church is moving. It hasn't been you removed. Know, the I think that the word is it's been item moved to April. To April. Yeah. Well, I, I seen it in the paper the other day, March 15th, so I don't want to get caught with my pants down. All of a sudden, they have it down there, and they got uh, 50, 60 people from <laughs> Biscayne Park, and we don't have anybody showing up. Mm-hmm. The facts, the facts, the facts. We need the facts. And, and, and all of a sudden, this rumor is out there that it's going to be postponed to, I don't know. I, I called uh, the chairman's office on Friday. The city, I'm sure, will let everybody we'll know. Yeah. I, I called the chairman's office on Friday, Chairman Monaghan, and, and um, I, I was supposed to hear something back today. I haven't. Okay. And I don't want to call Co- Commissioner uh, Sally Heyman's office because it might ring up on me. <laughs> 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 okay. um, anything else from anybody? Okay, do I hear a motion to adjourn? So moved. All in favor? Okay, thank you all very much. Thank you, Sharon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.